Hey, it's Melissa with The M Word. If you're new here, I'm a homeschooling mom of three kiddos. I have a nine-year-old, almost five-year-old, and an almost three-year-old. So today I'm going to be talking about Timberdoodle and the Timberdoodle Basic Kit. I know there's a lot out there about the Elite Kits and the Customized Kits, but I don't see a lot about those smaller kits. So first I wanted to go through what's in there and whether or not I think it's enough or not. So. I do have the third grade handbook here. We personally got a customized elite third grade Timberdoodle kit, non-secular for our homeschool this year. We always get the non-secular, that's what we prefer. Inside the Timberdoodle handbook, you will find a checklist for the elite, the basic, and the complete sets. And this handbook will be great for you regardless of what kit you pick and regardless of whether or not you customize your kit. So in the basic kit, you will get for thinking skills, critical and creative thinking. There is always some sort of critical thinking book that I have found in every single Timberdoodle kit we've ever gotten. This is the critical and creative. This is an Evermore one, and this is grade three. I think it's fun. I like that it has holidays in it. So what I will do is I don't do this book from front to finish. <laughs> Dogs are whining. Oh, if you hear my kids or see them running back and forth, they're playing outside. I can see them out the windows and, um, my older kid, she obviously knows the rules a little better, so she'll let me know if anything goes crazy. But if you hear them yelling, they're just playing outside. But in here, you will find a bunch of holidays in the beginning and months in the beginning. And then towards the back, there's like bears, into the woods. There's just different themes through all of this. My personal preference is to grab the ones in the front during that holiday or that month. And then I'll pop to the back and grab one for the kids to do while the rest of the month is going on or while the rest of the season is going on or whatnot. So it keeps it, I don't know, I guess, it, I think it keeps it themed in a way. The book's not designed that way. So like the spider one, I'll do in October and I'll do that in with the October chills part. So I'll just kind of go through here and pick what I think would be the most on theme for that month. Like the garden one I'll probably do in June or April. There's a giggle one, a listen one. Those kind of ones I'll just fill in where I need extra spaces. Timberdoodle does say to do just four pages a week. Sometimes we do more, sometimes we do less. This isn't one of those books that I feel must always be done by the end of the school year. But at the same time, I do think it's important and it is very good for their critical thinking skills, which is something they're gonna need as an adult. Math you see is what comes from math. I do have gamma that came with ours. We are still currently in beta, but I had gotten gamma with our kits because we weren't quite done with beta yet. There is the test book. Math you see seems really boring. I, I will, I'll be honest, it looks boring. I never open the instructor guide. I always use the digital, digital code that fell out so hopefully I might have to cut that but I always use the digital code that comes inside the book well I stick it in the book it's always here it comes with the book and it has the Dr. Demi or Mr. Demi's it has his hold on it has his videos and he goes through the instructions I sit there I watch the instructions with my daughter so I know how they're teaching things and how it goes but I personally never use this book unless I'm looking for the answers in the back to grade assignments which I guess I do open it for that. Then there is the student workbook. I used to laminate all the pages so I could use them for my children. I ended up deciding that it actually was costing me more in lamination paper than if I just bought this book every time I needed it. I finally decided to just let my daughter work directly out of the book and save myself some time and money. There are other ways you could do it. You could get those um, replaceable sleeves where you could rip the page out, the sleeve in there, but then you have to find somewhere to save these. And I'm honestly not that person. I just, I'm, I'm not. I tried to be and I'm not, I'm not. So I will just buy the next book each time I need one for my kid. What I was saying is I know it seems pretty boring and straightforward, but I feel like it doesn't have any extra fluff. It doesn't, it doesn't come across as boring. It doesn't have extra papers that you need to do unless your child needs them. It has more than five days a week of lessons in here. So you can take as long or as little as you need in a lesson for your child to get the concept that they're working on. There are some pages that are more fun. There's some review pages. There's, um, there's a couple review pages. There's an application and enrichment, which are the ones my kids find more fun. There is unit tests throughout. I know it's mastery and it makes it sound scary. Like you'll never ever go back to a concept you were learned previously. 
which is the case, yes, but it's not in the sense where it never goes back to a question you've done before. So like my daughter will have addition questions on some of her like application and written enrichment or in some of the review lessons. I always have her do some of the actual lesson. So there's, but the systematic reviews, they go back, they go back. The unit tests, the final test, they go back. Your child still needs to know the concept. It's not like if your child didn't get something, they'll never understand it. We don't move on until my daughter gets that concept. It's not like I just move on and spiral back to it and hope that she gets it the next time around. We just don't move on, which is why we were stuck in beta for a little while. She needed extra work. I printed off extra lesson plans from the website and just kept going with it until she got the concept. Did it slow us down? Yes, but does she have gaps in her math? No, which is why I prefer the mastery. It's, it's not gonna leave a gap. You'll know if your kid does or doesn't know the concept, which is why I like Matthew C and why we use Matthew C. For language arts, there's probably the most things in there. I missed a thing. Hold on one second. In language arts, it comes with cursive logic. We have been struggling with cursive logic, and I actually switched to a different cursive book recently. I don't think there's anything wrong with cursive logic. I think my daughter just wasn't getting it. I personally really like it, but we ended up, we did switch. But this is, it's, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't working for us. I will try it again with my other kids and see if maybe it works with them. It just didn't work with this one. So for the cursive though, in general, I do think it's very important. I know it's not necessarily taught in most public schools anymore. However, every old historic document is written in cursive. Every old ancestry logbook, um, basically every, it was all written in cursive. If you go through your ancestry, like if you do something with um, any ancestry app, say, and you're going back through it and you're trying to see if a document definitely matches up with your great great uncle or something, you would be really hard pressed to figure it out if you couldn't read cursive because most of it was written in cursive because it was all, it wasn't typed out. Everybody wrote it down. American history, world history, most of it's done in cursive. And if your child cannot read cursive, they can't know for sure that a subject was properly transcribed. If they have to rely on second sources instead of the first source option, I feel like that could hurt them and hinder them at some point in their lives. Whether it's something that actually has to do with their career or just has something to do with something they enjoy doing. Like I enjoy going through my ancestry and trying to figure all that out. And if I didn't know cursive, I couldn't read it. There's notes from my mom and my grandma. They're in cursive. I, my children would have no idea how to read those if I didn't teach them cursive. That was a long tangent for cursive. I'm sorry. The other option is spelling you see, which is actually the same company. It's the same company as Matthew C, but it's spelling you see. We tried spelling you see in kindergarten and first grade, and it didn't really work for my child. I do believe she's pretty dyslexic. I know it's the main one. It doesn't take as much time to do. It is a very well-rounded curriculum, but we do customize our kits and get all about spelling instead. Um, I went with this year, I went and got the color version. I do have some reviews on the color version as well. And this is what we've been working through. I started with level one because we weren't quite finished with it. So I just started over in level one when I got the color version. So some of it she flew through really fast and some of it we're now starting to like slow down again. So um, I think she'll be just fine in spelling with this. And this seems to, she seems to get the concepts better with all about spelling than she was with spelling you see, but both are great, well-rounded curriculums and you couldn't really go wrong with either. It's just what your child would prefer to use. The other thing that comes in the Timber Doodle Basic Kit is going to be your Mazdas Literature. It is a literature-based curriculum. I personally really do like it. It is, it can be a little overwhelming at first and kind of a little disorientating about how to work through it or what you should do, but I really do think the stories are so amazing and wholesome and they do a really good job about teaching literature and teaching literature understanding. 
And the best part about the Timber Doodle Handbook is in the back, if you get really overwhelmed, there is a straight explanation of how and what to do with Mazdas. I personally don't use it because we kind of use Mazdas how we want, but this would make it so you would know exactly what to do and when. Or do what I do and just kind of read whatever you want. The last thing that comes in the basic kits is going to be your Language Smarts D. This is a critical thinking group company. There's usually a book from this company in almost every level I've noticed or every kit level. It is going to have sentence fragments, capitalization, word parts. It has all the parts of English that wouldn't be literature. So this is going to be your how to properly write a paragraph, how to compare and contrast, how to understand what a sporting detail is, how to understand a setting or a plot or a character or what a metaphor is, or right now she's doing consent, cons, consent diaphragms. She's working on those. It does all of that. It's everything else. It's everything else. So the last thing it, why I mentioned at the beginning of this video is whether or not I thought the basic kit was enough. And the reality is I think it is. In my state specifically, the only things that would be missing would be a Phi Ed class or a health class. It's a health class. A health class a science class and a history class. And in my state, history and social studies are under the same umbrella, I think. Maybe I need to double check that. I do both, so it doesn't make a difference. I do think it's it's enough, especially if you're, there are seasons in our life where we are so overwhelmed that I don't know what to do or what to prioritize. And when those moments happen, I prioritize what's in the basic kit for language, arts, and math and I stop. I personally prefer the Elite Kit. It's the one that my husband and I agreed was the most well-rounded. Also, it has some fun aspects too that let your kid really enjoy learning and gives you a lot of touch points of learning something. However, is it necessary? Probably not, no. The basic kit has all the basic things that you would need to homeschool your child. It has everything from the very basics and that's really what it's called. The basic kit is the basic kit for a reason. Now, do you need to double check with your state to make sure you're not missing any subjects? That would be 100% yes. Check Google, just Google your state's homeschool requirements and it should populate something that'll tell you what your state's homeschool curriculum must-haves are because there will probably be one or two subjects that you will need to add in on your own. Does that mean you need to get a curriculum for those subjects? No. Does that mean you need to spend more money or put your kids in a home co-op for those subjects? Also, no. It can be as simple as finding some things on YouTube. It can be as simple as going to the library and picking out books together. It can be as simple as seeing a friend that has a farm and going out there. It, it can be as simple as buying a book or two. Like You don't have to buy anything. Go to your library. Go to your library. They have tons of science and history books that are amazing options for teaching those subjects to your children. I know our personal library does have Story of the World. We personally don't use Story of the World, but our library does have Story of the World that is available to check out. You could do that. So the options are there. The items that you could be doing are there. And you don't have to actually necessarily spend extra money. There's podcasts. There's there's a lot of things. I'm not saying use YouTube only to school your child. That's, that's not an option. Um, I guess it could be for some, depending on how you want to use it. In an unschooling way, it could be. But in my personal opinion, I don't think I should leave just YouTube to school my child. But I do use the option of YouTube to enhance what my child is learning. If my kids are learning something in history that they're not quite understanding, I will YouTube a kids history lesson on whatever it is we're learning about and it helps them give a visual picture to what they're reading which gives them the ability to round that up for them if you have any questions for me please leave them in the comment section below if you're wondering or want more extra details on something leave that in the comment section below i'll answer as best as i can or give you a link or an email for somebody who can help you and i will talk to you later